Alright, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you just some very basic architectural tools that you might not have known that exist in 3ds Max or you don't know how easy they are used or how well they actually do work for architecture as Autodesk used to be a AutoCAD maker now they just do some really cool architecture things in 3ds Max. Um, I'll also show you how to use a few plugins which are very good and create something very much so like this, just a very basic simple scene staircase come down, some nice railing, a floor inside that you can't really see, a nice double swinging door, and a few windows. As well, I'll show you some really nice ways to get some light in from windows using MR Sky Portals, and then just some basic rendering that I use for most of my architectural stuff, stuff that just looks really good for when you're doing architecture and beauty renders for that. So, we'll be working on a scene like this. Now let's get started. First, I will go reset my scene. First thing to do is set up the units. I work in decimal inches, so go under Customize, Unit Setup, you'll get this pop-up window. Usually it'll be on generic units, but click over the US Standard, Decimal Inches. This is easier for doing things like walls and floors and a lot of things that are in construction done by inches. So usually say like 8 foot walls or something, you don't really say 2.5 meter walls. Alright, next I will open up my Render Setup window right here, and I will set this over to Mental Ray Renderer. Mine's already in Mental Ray Render, as I can see here, but what yours is probably in default scan line, so you go down to Assign Renderer, and out of this you choose the Mental Ray. Mine's not in there because it's already selected. So, as well, I forgot to mention, I am using Autodesk 2011. The plugin that I use for the railing only works up to Autodesk 2012. The 2013 version is not out yet but I'm sure that it goes back all the way to 2009 or 2008, so really, between 2008 and 2012, you can use any Autodesk 3ds Max product. Most of the things are pretty basic, and they have been in here for a while. So, let's go to the starting of our model. First, we will make our wall for this thing. So, first I'll turn on snapping to make the wall very nice and easy. I'm going to right click on my snaps toggle, which is up here. Turn on snapping is just, you can hit hockey S, or just click the snaps toggle up in your toolbar up here. I'm going to right click on that, and snap only to grid points, because my grid points are 10 inches across, and it'll let me easily make a huge wall. Because I'm working off a very simple but large room. It's more just like a huge living room, something like that. So, to create walls, Let's go under Standard Primitives, under your Create Panel, Standard Primitives. You go to AEC Extended and hit Wall. Right here is your few parameters. You've got the width of the wall, the height of the wall, and the justification of the wall. So is this on the left side of the spline that we're going to create, the center of the spline that we're going to create, or is it justified on the right side of the spline we're going to create? Usually I just leave center because it's the easiest and it works just fine. So to use the wall tool, you just click and drag like any spline, so just click once drag up until we are at 230 inches. That's going to be the height of our wall. As you can see down here, grid point snap at scene root at 0, 0230. So we'll click that. Then we'll move over all the way to 430 inches. Right there. Drop all the way down to 0 again. Just make a nice square room like that. When asked you to well point, you go yes. It'll give you another wall to work off of. Just right click to get rid of that and your wall is made right there. So I'm going to go in another viewport to see it better and I'm going to zero out the wall. Just right click on those to drop them to zero. Draw snapping as well with hockey S. So we got a nice little wall right like that. Very simple to create, no messy polygons. If you turn on the wireframe view you can see the polygons are very nicely created and not too much problems with extruding and re-extruding a polygon or a spline or something like that. It's just a very simple way to do it. As well, there's some other cool things that I'll show you what they can do in a while. Actually, I'll show you right now. So what we're going to do is create a door for the wall. Click on under create, go down to doors, and I want a, a pivot door. We'll just make a basic pivot door. And drag it out for the width of it, drag it for the depth, and then drag out the height. This I really don't care really too much about. I'm going to quickly go into my modify panel and change them up to what I like and what actually houses most times have. So our width, our height, is going to be six feet, foot eight inches. So that's 80 inches. 
our width is going to be two and a half feet, so that's 30 inches. That looks a bit offset, so I don't know if I like it that much. I'm going to maybe do 36 inches. It's a three foot wide door. Let's make it a bit bigger. And our depth, make sure just a touch bigger than our wall. So we'll make it about six inches deep. Now I'm going to drag this out and place it on the wall kind of like that. Almost in the center. We'll move this over to the center, well about the center. And it's almost in the center of our wall. Actually I'm going to put it, since our wall is 430 inches across, this pivots right on the right hand side of this door as you can see. It's right there on the right hand side. And I'm going to move it over 15 so we get it nicely in the center. Or I'm going to move 18 because our door itself is 36 inches. I'm offsetting that just to get it nice in the center of our scene. So 18. Let's move something there. And now this is the beautiful thing about walls. I'm going to select my select and link tool, drag this to my wall. So just select and link this door to the wall, and you'll notice something really cool happens. It creates a cutout for your wall and it always and it updates it no matter what. As you can see we have a hole right there and if you open up the door you can see the hole is made right there beautifully for you. You can drag the door over here and it's updated again where the hole is. This makes it so much easier instead of having to deal with booleans and so many other problematic and very messy ways of doing stuff. It's just simple. It's very nice and easy to do. You see you got another hole over there and the hole goes away because the door is not in there. But you have to make the do sure the door is selected and linked. So I'm going to set this back to where it was at around 18 inches out. I'm going to and I'm going to go start doing some things in here. So first, the height, width, and depth is fine. Double doors I like having because, I mean, who doesn't like that? It looks so cool. It just opens double doors. Sure, it's not big, but it looks cool. I'm going to open them up a bit, so let's say around 75 degrees open. I'm going to create a frame for it so you get this nice little frame on the outside. And the frame, yeah, it looks alright. I'm going to see if I can make the width a bit less. But, I mean, that just looks a bit cheesy. So, our frame made about there is good enough. Depth can drop back a bit, so it's, it's kind of sitting flush with the wall. I'll just drop the depth back a bit more. And set it inside right there. Nicely done. Um, so, we're going depth about 0.1 inches. Thickness is about 0.2 for the leaf, and the leaf is this part inside right here. As you can see, if I switch it over, you can see the leaf get deeper. That's the actual door that opens up and closes. This is the, I guess, inset of itself, but I don't like having my panels on my door, so I just turn them off. You can have glass panels, which look like this, and you can change the thickness, or you can have beveled panels, which are a bit more crazy, but I just use normal, no panels, just basic door. Next thing we are going to create is the floor, ceiling, and windows. So I'm just going to quickly drag out a plane for the floor. This will use floor generator on later to create an actual hardwood floor looking like thing. And since I know the width is 430 by 230, I'll just put that in quickly. Oh, well it's 230 by 430 really just matters what viewport you created it in, and it shall, if you, when you zeroed out, it should sit nicely inside there since I zeroed out my walls as well. You can see, and then just drop the length and width segments down to 1 by just right clicking those. As you can see, it's just a very basic floor. Now for my ceiling, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to cr actually just take the floor plane and drag it up until it's about 8 feet up, as that was the height of my door, so 8 feet is 96 inches. And because planes usually don't have two sides, there's normals only on one side, I'm going to add a quick shell modifier to make it have some width to it. Shell modifier and give it a motor amount of about one. There we go. It's good enough. And since you can see it coming up here, since I give it an outer mount, I will give drop this back down to 95 inches since it's got one inch added to it from the shell modifier. There you go. If I zoom in there, there is our inside of our well house thingy. And you might not be impressive, but it's been very quick to create it, just an outline of a house. Next is the windows. So the windows, you can use their windows, which work very much like the doors. You can just take a projection window or something like that. This is really just any window for demonstration purpose. And it works exactly like their doors. It cuts it out very nicely. 
and you'll just select and link it. Window to door or window to wall, and move it around. However, for when we're going to be doing it with the final gather lighting and the mental ray objects, the way they use them, it's pretty hard for the mental ray to properly go through glass and still get that effect of light streaming in windows. So I just do booleans. It's not as clean, but it works better better for the lighting. And so first, I'm going to shift drag this wall up just to make sure make a copy of it. So we still have the parametric wall behind it. Doesn't have any edible poly in it or no booleans in it. Gonna hide that selection so we don't have to see it again. It's just a backup. I'm gonna make some boxes in the front viewport for the windows. So we're gonna have a box like that. There's gonna be four huge square windows in front of it. And I'm gonna make about let's say about 72. So these are six foot wide and six foot tall windows. These are big, big windows. And let's make sure the height is a least a bit bigger than our wall so we can easily boolean it out and we don't get any artifact in there. So shift drag the windows across and really this is all about artistic license. Your windows can be any other type you want them. Just make them boxes or anything really and just boolean them out. Now I'm going to bring my windows up. Select them all here, bring them up to here and select and link them. First I'm just going to hit F3 to make it easier for me to see and they're on both sides of it. I'm just moving this over so I can see a bit. Yeah, it looks good enough. And I'll just make them a bit deeper. Why not, right? Drop them in a bit more because we have the room for it. Change this to a... Go under Create. Under Compound Objects. Go Pro Boolean. And Pro Boolean is very powerful for Boolean. It just allows you to do multiple Booleans at the same time. Hit Start Picking. And select our four windows. Right click on this wall again, convert to an Evo Poly, and there we go. We have windows in our scene. Now next I'm going to create is the deck for it. So our deck will be quite large, but just about four feet or five feet wide, and then just the exact length of the house. So for the deck I'm just going to create another box, so standard primitives box, drag it out, and drag it down because you want it just to walk, guys walk straight on the desk, as well a bit of a staircase down, but nothing big. It's easy enough going to be made. So we want our width to be 430, since we know we had that set up properly last time. Our length, let's say, let's say it's an 8 foot desk, so 96 inches wide. Actually that looks pretty small. So I get a 10 foot desk, or a 12 foot desk, 144 inches. It's a big deck, it's a big house, just everything's quite large in here. And our height will be about 4 inches wide. So, as you can see, our door clips into it. We don't want that, so we're going to drop it down just a touch so you can put some stairs in there. And I'm going to zero out the X position so it's nicely centered. There we go. Our deck is made. It's very simple, but we will add stuff to it to make it look much better very quickly. So I'm just going to drag it back so it sits flush with the wall as it already does. Next thing to do is to create some stairs and this was under AEC Extended. No, it's not. It's under Stairs. I don't know why I say AEC Extended. It's under Create, under Stairs, and it gives you four different types of stairs. We'll be using the Spiral and Straight Stair, but these L and U work the almost the exact same way as the Straight Stair, except the L is an L shape and the U is a U shape, as I'll quickly demonstrate. Drag it out, and there's your U shape stairs, or the L shape is the exact same. Drag it out, there's your L shape of stairs. However, we'll just use the straight stairs to come down from this area right here. Go up, over, and up. We've got a nice little staircase down. It's not in position yet, and it's not rotated properly. So I'm going to zero the rotation on the z-axis by pressing E for the hockey of rotation, and then going down here and right-clicking it. I'll move this over inside, and then in my left viewport, I'm going to drop it down to try to even it out nicely. So we walk straight out onto the staircase. It's not properly set up yet, but it gives us a nice position to start with. Yeah, we'll move that up so it's actually sitting right there. It's easier to work from there.